Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as the Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform, and you can also access my official website at thereligioushippie.com. So today, because I had that whole series of movies and TV shows I regret or will not watch as a Catholic, a lot of people wanted to see TV shows and movies that I do enjoy as a Catholic. Noted that not all of these movies will be for everyone, but I'm going to split this up into a four-part series, um, and then you guys can watch them as like homework if you want to. I, I don't really care. Um, but I have my little list here, and we're going to go through five movies that I enjoy as a Catholic. But really quick, before we get into that, today's sponsor is The Little Catholic Box. Every month, The Little Catholic Box sends out a new box of Catholic items to their subscribers. And this is the month of May, so obviously we know it's the month of Mary, and they sent out a beautiful box this month. So this is one of the items. It's this beautiful Mary handkerchief, and it has her M on it from the Miraculous Medal. Another item this month is this cute statue of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. It comes in its own little stand, and I cannot wait to add this to my collection. This dish towel is another one of the items they sent out this month, Mary Garden Dish Towel. This is so beautiful, so springy. I'm in love with this. And I have to be honest with you guys, my favorite item that they sent out this month was this adorable little flower vase. On it, it says, if a little flower could speak, it would tell us all that God has done for it. I'm so ready to put a little flower in here and put it with all of my Mary statues for the month of May. So definitely go check out the Little Catholic Box. You can either subscribe to their monthly boxes and get items like this, or you can go to their website and you can purchase certain items separately. So definitely go check them out and you can use my affiliate link in the description below for 10% off your order. Okay. Now let's go on to the video. Okay, number one on the list is Roe vs. Wade. This was a movie that came out in 2019. It basically describes how abortion became so prominent in today's culture. It was based off of a lie. Um, it goes into real stories of an actual um, doctor who performed abortions. It goes into the lives of the women. It goes into the lives of the people who tried to protest this and tried to get people to go against it. And there's this wonderful monologue kind of near the end where the main character, this doctor who's performing abortions, walks into a Catholic church and he has this whole monologue with Christ. And it was just really beautiful to see how he started having this change of heart. And he's the one that actually coaxed his, I believe his fiance at the beginning to get an abortion before they were even married. And she ended up, I don't know if she died of it, but she was all bloodied and it was pretty bad. So this is a really good informative movie, si kind of similar to Unplanned. It basically describes the history of abortion, how it came to be, and it goes into how hopefully we can defeat it. I highly suggest the movie. I really enjoyed it and I think you will too. But again, not every single movie I'm going to mention in this series is going to be appropriate for all ages. So please just look at it, make sure that it's appropriate for you and your family or for yourself before watching it. I will say that I wrote this list out before all this craziness with Disney happened, um, but a movie I really enjoyed was Encanto. I actually watched this movie probably nearly about 26 times because the girls I babysit, which I babysit all girls in every family I babysit for, and each one of them was obsessed with Encanto. So whenever I would go over there, they would always be watching it. It didn't matter what time of the day. It didn't matter if they were watching it. It was always on. And so I got very familiar with Encanto. I'm sure all of you guys are already familiar with Encanto. And while I don't suggest you go and support big corporations like Disney, especially with all the information that has come out about Disney, it was a movie that I really enjoyed. It was about a girl who wasn't giving any powers and her entire family was given powers because they were blessed with a miracle. And overall, I just thought it was a really cute movie. I loved the music. The music was amazing. And I have the playlist on my phone on Spotify because it is great. So that's just another movie I really enjoy. Number three is The Right. This is considered to be like a horror movie, I believe. I watched it a really, really long time ago, and my priest friend, Father Dan, you go, you guys know him as the Karate Priest, he brought this movie up in one of his podcasts um, that I was a guest in, which was really awesome. Love Father Dan. You guys should check out his podcast, um, The Karate Priest. But he mentioned this movie, and I remember watching it a couple years ago, and it was really good. It basically follows this priest who is, I believe he's either being trained to be an exorcist Anyways, I think it portrays exorcisms very well. Obviously, in the Catholic Church, we are not allowed to film exorcisms because that's not allowed um, for privacy reasons and a bunch of other spiritual reasons. But 
This, I feel like, is the closest they got to what an actual exorcism is like in Hollywood, and the priests are really good, and I think the acting's really good, um, but again, it is considered to be like a horror movie, so if you're not into that, maybe skip this one. Number four, The Hardy Boys. Now, <laughs> now let me just say, okay, this is what they do in kids' movies, okay? I don't, I guess I wouldn't really call The Hardy Boys a kid movie, but originally, The Hardy Boys that I put down was the most recent one that just came out in like 2019 or something. I was raised on the original Hardy Boys with like Sean Cassidy and Parker Stevenson, but I was like, oh, a new Hardy Boys. Like, I love the Hardy Boys and I love Nancy Drew. Let's give it a try, right? And the first season was really, really good. I really enjoyed the mystery aspect. I kind of sad that the fact that like their mom died, and but they actually went into that detail and like, oh, this is actually how they lost their mom because I don't think in the books or the older TV show they ever really got into that. Um, they were already like 20 year olds and solving mysteries. So I really enjoyed the first season of the new Hardy Boys. And then the second season came out and mm, <laughs> Literally, within the first three episodes of the second season, their Aunt Trudy is gay. There's devil worship. There's this thing called, like, Devil's Day or something, and they all basically dress up in these scary costumes and stuff. I'm like, seriously? Hey, guys, so just a little editor's note while I am editing... Socks. While I'm editing this, we actually finished uh, season two of The Hardy Boys, and it actually wasn't that bad. The whole Demon's Day thing wasn't really... There was... There was no demon worship in the thing, so I don't know why I said that. Um, I guess because I assume because it's called Demon's Day or whatever. So there was like two episodes about Demon's Day or whatever, but it was mainly about like kids going missing and things like that. It wasn't about the devil. So it was weird. Okay, season two is really weird. I think they just threw a bunch of loopholes in there. Like the editors didn't know what to do next, so they just kept throwing things in there randomly like a telenovela. Um, but... It wasn't awful, and despite the fact I still prefer the original Hardy Boys, this one, it's, it's not, it's not, like, horrible. I mean, it's kind of bad because of the LGBTQ stuff, but it's, like, I don't know how, I don't know, at your own discretion. A, Aunt Trudy and the police officer lady couldn't have just been really good friends because in the first season, they looked like really good, just best friend, girls' best friends, you know? And I was just like, yes, finally, girl best friends that aren't gay. Like, yes, okay? Like, they finally did it. And then the season two, they're, they're a lesbian couple. So I'm like up to here with Hollywood at this point. So I don't really suggest the Hardy Boys season two of the new one, but I do suggest the old series with Sean Cassidy and Parker Steven, or Steven Parker, Parker Steven? I don't know. I had the biggest crush on Sean Cassidy when I was younger. I loved Scooby-Doo. I, I was huge into mysteries. The Boxcar Kids, Nancy Drew. I really preferred the Hardy Boys over Nancy Drew though. And I will state, I still sometimes read the Hardy Boy books. It's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. But basically, if you guys don't know what the Hardy Boys are, which I mean, how could you not? But if you don't, there are these two brothers that basically go around and solve mysteries with their dad, Fenton. So there's Joe and Frank Hardy and their brothers. Joe's the youngest. <laughs> and the cutest in my opinion. And they go around and they just solve these mysteries. And it's really cool. There's like really big spikes of like adrenaline and like they get kidnapped sometimes. And I don't know, they always seem to MacGyver their way out of it though. Also, if you guys haven't seen MacGyver, that's another one that's really good. The old one though, with Richard Dean Anderson, not the new one. That was like crap. There was literally a sex scene within like the first five minutes of the movie. Like, come on. Okay, and last but not least, the Narnia series. Now, if you guys remember the old Narnia series, the BBC version, which had like uh, the silver chair, a bunch of other ones, there was like a whole thing. And then they remade the Narnia series in like 2016. No, I was way younger than that, 2003, 2006? Somewhere around there, I was pretty young. I was like seven. So I'm pretty sure it came out in 2006, don't know. But they remade the Narnia series and I loved it. The first movie is really, really, really good. People think the acting is horrible. I get that, but it's really good. Like the movie, the plot line, the Christian undertones, everything is just like amazing. Okay. The second movie, Prince Caspian, is heart-wrenching, obviously. So I don't know if I would suggest that for little kids, but the third movie is also pretty heart-wrenching. 
and I really wouldn't suggest that one for little kids, especially with the sea monster that happens in the end, kind of. That one's kind of scary. But anyone who knows me knows I love C.S. Lewis. I have his book, The Screwtape Letters. I have a couple other of his books that I can't read off right at the moment, but we do have the Narnia series, and we've watched all the Narnia BBC versions, and we actually have them on DVD somewhere. I don't know if those are, like, vintage now, but it was an interesting series, and, um... Aslan just like flying through the air and the silver chair, something about a snake, this old man that lived in the hills. It's a lot of weird stuff, but I thought it was pretty good. And I'll be honest with you, I wish that they did the silver chair in the updated version and they did more movies from the BBC version in the new updated version, but they didn't get there, which is fine. And I'm sure the actors got older and blah, blah, blah. So I get it, but I can't, a girl can still dream. Let me know which ones you enjoyed in the comments below. This is going to be part one out of four, three, part one out of three, whatever. So stay tuned for this series. I think it's going to be a good one. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.